Hey! You're alive! When I dragged you out of the river, I thought you were never gonna wake up. I checked your pockets for ID... a phone, maybe? I hope you don't mind. But all I found was some loose change. So... Wanna tell me who you are? Well, it's nice to meet you. And... I'm sorry to pry, but... Any idea why you were floating down the river? What's the last thing you remember? Oh! You're an archaeologist? Then you'll definitely want to hear this. I don't know if it's exactly what you're looking for, but... There are some ruins just behind you. Roman, I think. I need you to go in there and see if you can find a guy named Al for me. He went in there a few hours ago, and he hasn't come out. I've been freaking out, wondering if he's trapped, or injured, or worse. I would have gone in after him, but he made me promise to stay here, no matter what. There's no way I'm leaving without him. So I'm just kind of... stuck here, waiting. I need... what I mean is... I was hoping you wouldn't mind going in there to find him. If you can do that, I can get both of you back to civilization in my boat. Please? Oh, of course. Sorry, I don't mean to be pushy. I just... What do you want to know? He's the guy who washed up on the riverbank not long before you did. I thought maybe you two knew each other. I guess not. But maybe the two of you can piece together what you're doing here. In any case, you'll like him, I'm sure. Once you find him, that is. What am I, an idiot? You could hike a long, long way in any direction and never find another soul. Trust me. Oh, there's not much to tell. Feels like I've spent my whole life in a dead-end job with an endless commute. Know what I mean? Oh, uh, I'd rather not say if it's all the same to you. All right, fine. Sorry if I sounded cagey, it's just that... I don't always get the best reactions when I introduce myself. My name's... Karen. Look, if you really want to know all the tragic details, perhaps I can fill you in after you find Al? Not much, really. But imagine what you might find in there. Priceless ancient artifacts. Al... Great. 
So you're ready to go look for Al? My hero. The entrance is just past those columns behind you. Oh, and he left this here. But I think you'll need it more than I will. If you're reading this, it means I've discovered the entrance to an ancient Roman city, hidden deep underground. Its existence is long forgotten. All knowledge of it lost, except in the Latin inscription here. Its existence is long forgotten. All knowledge of it lost, except in the Latin inscription here. It reads, you who wish to enter the city, step forth and be judged. The virtuous shall be rewarded with eternal life in paradise. The wicked shall find themselves showered in gold, but in vain, for this shall be their final resting place. Could an underground city have remained a secret for all this time? Could people have survived down there, against the odds? It seems there's only one way to find out. If I'm not back in an hour, I'm somewhere on the other side. Consider this an invitation, or a warning. Al Worth.
To whoever reads this, I'm sorry you had to find me like this. And worse, she'll suffer the same fate I did. I've spent a lifetime in this place, going around and around in circles, searching for a way out. The inscription was right. There is no way back. In here, there are only two options. Death, or that godforsaken doorway into the past. I made the mistake of stepping through it. I wanted to set things right. And I tried. I really tried. Whatever I did, it took me right back to the beginning. Don't make the same mistake. Better to end it all now. And find out what awaits you beyond that portal. Salve, friend. I'm Galerius. Mind telling me who you are and what you were doing in the Shrine of Proserpina? Yeah, you know, agricultural goddess of springtime? You're not from around here, are you? Oh, I see what you did there, changing the subject like that. Nice try. But I'll ask again, who are you and what were you doing in the Shrine? Oh, is that right? Well, just make sure you don't get lost in any other sacred places you're not supposed to be. Can't have you disrespecting the gods by accident, can we now? But listen, most folks seem a bit confused when they get here, but you... you seem very lost, and in more ways than one. So, let me make this nice and simple for you. Live by our law here, and we'll all get along just fine. Not laws, law. There's just one, the golden rule. And the punishment for breaking it's... Well, it's kind of horrific. But our magistrate insists we take all newcomers to see him, so I guess I'll let him fill you in. So then, are you coming? Follow me! When I first arrived, I couldn't believe there were people living down here. But, as you can see, we've got a nice little community now. Only 23 of us at the moment, if you count the three who are missing. No idea how, since nobody knows a way out. But it's just big and dark enough to get lost in, if you're not careful. Aren't you going to introduce me to your pretty new friend, Galerius? Keep it in your loincloth, Aurelia. I'm taking her to see the Magistrate. That pompous old boar won't be Magistrate for much longer. Anyone who helps vote him out today, drinks at my bar for free tonight. Ugh, politics. I'd stay clear of it and her, if I were you. She's... uh, it's not my place to say. Down on your right is our farm, where I grow all the food you'll ever want. As long as all you want is leek, cabbage and wheat, Huh. That one usually gets a chuckle. The bloodless shadows wander without flesh or bone. Ah, don't mind Livia. She means well. She's just been in a bad place since... Well, you know, I don't know what happened to her. Up here on your right is the chasm. If you've got a weapon, it belongs way down at the bottom. Up on your left is the Forum, where you can visit the market or get yourself patched up in Lucretia's clinic in the Shrine of Apollo. Most of us have almost nothing, just what we had on us when we arrived, and what we've been able to make and scrounge up since. And this central plateau is where the Magistrate and the other patricians live, 
so don't expect a warm welcome. Galerius, you're meant to be working the farm, not trudging dirt into the villas. Take it easy, Horatius. I was just taking our new friend here to see the magistrate. Well, he's asked me to escort the newcomer personally. The farm. Go. Now. You'd better go with him. But just remember, they're not like you and me. Don't let them use you. What was that? What did you just say? Uh, I said it'll take some getting used to. Yeah, I'm watching you, farm boy. Greetings, citizen. My name's Horatius. Magistrate Sentius asked me to escort you to him personally. Follow me, please. Follow me. The only thing you really need to understand right now is the Golden Rule. Let me see if I can explain it this way. When I was serving in the Legion, if there was a mutiny brewing in one cohort, the Legate in charge wouldn't waste time finding the bad apples among hundreds. They just divided us into groups of ten, made us draw straws, and whoever drew the short straw had to be executed by the other nine. Didn't matter whether he'd done anything wrong. One of us in ten would die for the crimes of the Collective. We call it decimation. If that seems like rough justice to you, you're in for a rude shock. Because the Golden Rule is exactly ten times worse. The Magistrate can explain the rest. He's up these stairs. We're finally alone. I assume you already know who I am. May I know your name? A curious name, to match a curious accent. But I digress. I see you have the piercing and astute eyes of Athena. You must be a woman of great learning. We're always happy to welcome another scholar to our little community. Equitia will be delighted to meet you, I'm sure. Now, you're probably wondering why I summoned you, and I'll get to that. But first, take a look at this wondrous place, would you? A secret city built deep in the mountains many hundreds of years ago. Indy, more importantly, consider the miraculous community we've built here over the last seven months. Twenty-two complete strangers brought together by the fates, living and working together in our own little paradise. And in all that time, not a single sin has been committed. No fights, no theft, nothing. Have you ever witnessed something so extraordinary as a city without sin? Nor could I until I came here. But the reason for this, this miracle, is as simple as it is terrifying. If even one person commits a sin here, every last one of us will die. You see, the builders of this place, whoever they were, left inscriptions warning, the many shall suffer for the sins of the one. From what we can gather, breaking the law here will anger the gods and provoke a terrible punishment. Like the curses of Medusa and Midas combined, turning us all to gold. We've come to call it the Golden Rule. It's extraordinary that we've survived as long as we have, and each day I grow more and more afraid that our time in the sun is almost up. And now it seems that day is finally here. All that matters is that somebody in this city is about to break the Golden Rule. Why else would Proserpina send you now? Unless you and I can stop them, our doom is assured. I know that's a lot to take in, and you look like you have questions. Please, ask away. An intelligent question. There was a good deal of debate about that in our first weeks here. Does it refer to crimes, or to some other ill-defined wrong? Of course, everyone agrees on the basics. No theft, no assault, and certainly no murder. But beyond that, it was more difficult to reach a consensus. What a 
about lying, insulting someone, blasphemy, trespass, trying to escape, bribery, infidelity, suicide. As magistrate, I had to exercise leadership, and so I made a decision. We must uphold the laws of the Empire to a standard never before seen. And we must honor the peace of the gods, the sacred accord between the gods and the people of Rome. It is only by offering the gods the proper respect that we may prosper, as Rome has for centuries. I'm glad you agree. The key things to remember are that we have laws forbidding treason and blasphemy, murder, assault and rape, as well as theft and arson and so on. I have made my pronouncement on the subject. Unfortunately, there are still those here who resist, whispering blasphemous and treasonous lies in the shadows. I would be keeping a close eye on them if I were you. You see, in my search for a way to save my people, I learned of an ancient ritual to Proserpina, the goddess of the cycle of life and renewal. It's said to open a doorway in time, so that if the unthinkable happens, one person can pass through it and travel back to the past. And when I saw you arrive in a flash of light from the goddess's shrine, I knew that person was you. You don't belong in our time, do you? Two thousand years? That is... Unfathomable. Please, tell me, in your time, what did you see? What had become of us, of this city? I have imagined it, our downfall, a thousand times. But it still breaks my heart to hear the truth of it. All I can tell you is that it's a ritual sacrifice to Proserpina. I stumbled across instructions. I have to recite a prayer, and of course, as with all rituals, some sacrifice is involved. Usually that means wine or food, or in some cases, a live animal. In this case, the sacrifice is rather more costly. The life of the person performing the ritual. I don't suppose you saw any sign of me in the future? Ah, I assume that was me. If I'm forced to perform the ritual, it's going to cost me everything. You'll try to make sure I don't need to use it, won't you? Well, I suppose that's all I can ask for. Do you ever stare at a problem for so long that you can't see it for what it is anymore? What's needed here is a fresh pair of eyes. The less I prejudice the independence of your investigation, the better. There are those who wish to vote me out of office so that they can pursue their own misguided political agenda. Frankly, their selfishness and recklessness risk destabilizing the entire city. I would be looking very carefully at them if I were you. I believe you're in the best position to go around asking people questions. You're new here, and it'll seem perfectly normal. As for me, well, it pains me to say my attempts to impose order have not earned me many friends. I fear I may not even remain magistrate after today's election. The people here would only treat my curiosity with suspicion. You shouldn't have that problem, though, unless, of course, you get off on the wrong foot.
If I understand Persepina's ritual correctly, that problem should take care of itself. Let me see if I can explain. If you manage to prevent the... I won't need to bring you here. I won't create the portal, and you will never have been able to come here. Thus, you'll have created a paradox. If this occurs, you should be flung back to your own time, having changed the past for all of us. Make sense? Ah, good. So, are you with me? Can I count on you to figure out who's about to break the golden rule? Wonderful. Now, I need you to investigate the city, talk to everyone, help them, if it'll win their trust. I authorize you to enter private homes and inspect possessions and documents, unless, of course, you're asked to leave. Figure out who the culprit is, and as soon as you have a name, come back and tell me immediately. thing. If I were you, I'd start my investigation by visiting Lucretia at the Shrine of Apollo in the Forum. I heard wailing from there not long ago. Seems like something's not right. Don't mind me. I just live here. Citizen? Fear is proof of a degenerate mind. Hey, Horatius. How's it feel knowing your man's doomed to lose the election today? Isn't the Great Temple... Give me a moment. Sorry I'm such a mess. I just lost a patient and a dear friend. Yulia. She was a good woman. She was poisoned. She came in here frothing at the mouth. Normally I'd treat her with resin of sylphium, a rare plant which is perfect for this sort of thing. And I knew Dacius had some at his market stall, right around the corner. So I ran over there, but he just looks at me with this evil smile and says, That'll be a thousand denarii. There was no way I could afford that, and he knew it. Then that toad shrugs and says, 
supply and demand. I guess you don't value your friend's life that highly. Anywhere else, I'd just pay a thug to steal it from his stall. But there's no way I can do that down here with the golden rule. So all I could do is come back here and just watch her die. I kept on apologizing. And now I'll never know who poisoned her or how they managed to do it without breaking the golden rule or why she cursed that snake's cruel black eyes with her dying breath. Well, unless you have the power to bring someone back from the dead, there's really just one thing you can do. Get me that silphium resin. I'm going to have another patient in here soon. Could be in the next day or in the next hour. And I will not allow this to happen again. I don't care how you get it, but you have to make it happen. Because if I lose another patient this way, I swear to the gods below, not even the golden rule will stop me from marching up to that genetic comfort and scratching his eyes out. Sure. What do you want to know? Do you really want to know? I mean, if somebody poisoned her, then surely they would have broken the golden rule, and... So, maybe it's best we don't discuss it. Hemlock, I believe. I haven't seen her in months. She's not allowed to leave Maliolas's villa. And they are quite secretive. Gladly. I'm Lucretia, and I'm going to be straight with you. I'm not a physician. This is Nevia's clinic. I've just been filling in ever since she disappeared. I'm tired and out of my depth and miserable all the time. But I'd rather take this on myself than let one of you lot mess it up. Oh, this shrine was in use as a clinic long before any of us arrived here. Kind of strange to set up a clinic in the temple of the god of disease. But the god who inflicts a curse is also the only god who can undo it. So I suppose praying to Apollo for healing kind of makes sense. My husband and I moved to Rome from Caesarea. He embraced the Roman way more than I would have liked and turned into an awful philanderer. I would have divorced him and demanded the return of my dowry, but I knew he would sooner have me killed than give me my right. So I waited for the right time to take what was mine and disappear. And then the fires came as he prepared to evacuate our villa. I gathered our most precious belongings, coins and gemstones, and the moment his back was turned, I ran. I could barely see for the smoke, and the streets were full of people trampling each other. I ran for the river, like everyone else, and leapt in. The next thing I remember, I was waking up on a riverbank, not far from here. It's all right. Say what you will about this place. At least my fornicating husband will never find me. And while there's no shortage of snakes here, at least with the golden rule, they have to try to be discreet about it. Not a physician, but she was the closest thing we had down here. And she was good, too. Until she suddenly lost all interest in us. One day she told me she'd made some profound discovery about the golden statues. This changes everything, she kept saying. But I had no idea what she was talking about. The last time I saw her, the last time any of us saw her, she was muttering to the statues, like she could talk to them. And then she shut herself in the palace 
barred the door from the inside, and nobody has seen her since. She's been gone so long now, we figure she's either dead or up to something so strange that she doesn't want anyone else to know about it. But I really wish I could reach her, because that's the only hope I have of solving a troubling problem, a real thorn in the poor situation. One of my patients is suffering from terrible rheumatism. His joints are inflamed and he's in constant pain. He's become so irritable that the smallest things set him off and I worry he'll end up losing his temper and lashing out. And you know what that means. I just know Navia would know how to treat him, assuming she's still alive. But nobody seems to know how to get into the palace. I suppose. A city without sin might sound good on paper, but whoever dreamt it up didn't think it through. Maybe it was an attempt to create some kind of utopia. But snakes like Decius will always find loopholes to exploit. And what can we do about it? Absolutely nothing. In some ways we are worse off because we can't take the law into our own hands. Well, come back if you get sick or injured. Day or night, I'll do what I can. Virgil, how much would you want to make me a bow? For the last time, Dacius, I'm not making you a bow. But why? You know why. But how am I going to defend myself against someone else with a weapon? There are no other weapons in the city. We all went along with the Magistrate's weapons ban, so it wouldn't be an issue. That's why I've got to get in first before someone else beats me to it. Ugh. What you do? Salve, stranger, and welcome to our idyllic little slice of the Empire. I'm Dacius. Terrible shame what happened to Yulia, but we just have to carry on, don't we? Certainly. All I ask is a reasonable price of a thousand denarii. Oh, it's perfectly legal. Simply a question of supply and demand, I'm afraid. Take it or leave it. Hear what? Ah, uh, are you sure you're feeling all right? If you're hearing things, perhaps you should pay a visit to Lucretia's clinic. We don't want another navier on our hands. Well, she claimed the statue was a whispering to her. Nobody else could hear it. Then she shut herself in the palace and we never heard from her again. But I digress. Do you want this Sylphium or not? That's hardly my concern. But if you get a job, work hard and save your coins, you should be able to afford it within, say, five years? Very well. Perhaps I can interest you in something within your budget? You mean, how did I end up here? That is a lengthy tale. All right. Well, you see, I'm in the business of procuring rare and precious objects liberated from the enemies of Rome. 
Mostly sculptures, vases, the occasional slave, fetch a magnificent price in Roman high society. Had myself a nice little shop in Rome, just off the Forum. Lots of foot traffic and close to the docks. Good place to be when the fires broke out. See, about seven months ago, half of Rome caught on fire. Everyone who couldn't get to an outer gate was running for the river, open to escape by barge. So I gathered my coins and some priceless vases into a cart and had my most loyal slave girl, pretty young thing named a camphor, push it for me. All the way down to the river, I'm elbowing for a stampede of people, turning back now and then to make sure she hasn't legged it with my valuables. But, to my surprise, we make it, and I see this barge loading up, and it's so full it's almost sinking. But the captain's happy to take my coin, so I start boarding, and then he puts his hand on my chest and he says, No, too heavy. The cart or the girl. So I did what anyone would have done. The girl? Weren't you listening? All my valuables or the girl? I mean, I can always buy a new slave girl if I still have my money. So I put me hand on the car and I guess she realised what was happening because those pretty black eyes of hers go all wide. And in one swift motion, she topples the whole bloody thing into the Tiber. Naturally, I dived in after it, hoping to salvage my fortune. Only, I guess I must have hit my head or something, because everything went black. When I came to, I'd washed up on the riverbank, not far from here, with nothing in the world but a single silver coin. I couldn't agree more. I mean, sure, I'd lost a few thousand denarii, but I've already made it back, and this place is a veritable treasure trove. Look around you, there must be more gold in here than in the treasury of Rome. If I can just figure out how to get it out of here. I'm afraid not. If you're desperate, I did hear that Aurelia down at the tavern claims to know of a way out, but I'm not sure I trust her. Some people here are a little shady for my liking. Oh yeah, gotta watch out. Old Dacius has got your back though. Maliolus. I mean, Sentius couldn't even keep his daughter safe. What hope does he have of protecting us? Certainly. It's terrible for inflation is what it is. There's so much gold just lying around, it's practically worthless. At least down here. Of course, I have an idea for generating real wealth, but... What I need is a bow. Just a simple composite bow. I've scoured this city from top to bottom with no luck. But if you happen to find one, bring it to me and we'll talk. Oh, well, technically yes, but that just means you'll need to be a little discreet. No need to decide on anything yet. Just sleep on it, yeah? Very well. Another time. How'd you do?
many shall suffer for the sins of the one you 